sleep is so important. It's not about sleeping early. It's about having at least six hours of sleep. Because if you just focus on trying to wake, uh, wake up early, but then you know, allow yourself three or four hours of sleep, then you're really losing that whole benefit. The whole benefit from it is supposed to be clarity and smart and smartness and, and whatever it is. You're actually going to feel sluggish. You're going to feel tired, grumpy, and maybe even pick on your loved ones, right? Like Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Lynn Panetti here helping you to achieve time freedom so you have more time for self, family, business and life. Now you're wondering how to wake up early so that you could achieve more but at first you're wondering why am I so crazy to wake up at 3 a.m. Now first of all let's talk about the benefits. Now I didn't really know what the benefits were when I got started. I only decided to wake up early a few years ago because I thought successful people do it so why not try it? But I didn't really know what the benefits were. I just knew that it made people successful or successful people do it. And come on if they're successful and they, they might know a thing or two that non-successful people don't know. So that's why I follow through but I didn't really know the benefits well. Now three or four years ago I started waking up 4 a.m. And I would say that my life has changed. I'm more happier, I'm more content, and I also just get more things done that are important to me. Because at the end of the day, unless you're happy and you got everything balanced in your life, it's your self, time for self, time for fitness, time for family, time for your work. If you don't actually have time for those things and make time for it, you're never gonna feel fully balanced and content. The only way to do that is waking up early. Now, the benefit that I found is not just extra time, but it's also the energy. So in the morning when I wake up, I have so much energy and my brain cells is really effective. So this is when I started to come up with some great insights and ideas. I used to go to the gym, but at this moment in time, I actually work out from home on a Zoom call, but I'm able to fit in all those extra things in the morning that is important. Like to get more energy is by also doing some exercise to boost that energy. So I was able to achieve overall more ideas and insights so that I could actually use it for my business. I could plan out my week, plan out my day much easier and I have time for journaling, which is very healthy for the mind. Um, I also have more time to work on the important work. So early in the morning when it's so tranquil, I can actually focus on high impactful work that requires a lot of my thinking or I would spend more time doing content planning, like what I'm gonna talk about or creating content for Instagram or YouTube. This is where my brain is fully clear and can actually come up with those content. And of course, by having all that time to myself and clearing my brain and having all that proactive time to myself, I'm able to then at 7.30 when I spend time with my kids preparing them for lunch, I'm not as like, you know, thinking about work, like, oh my God, I have all these to-dos because I've already done all of them and done it prior to everyone else waking up. And so when the time I have to prepare the kids or even throughout my day, I'm not as feeling rushed because I felt like I've already achieved the key things in my day. Okay, so you probably get it, all right? I wanna wake up early because it sounds great. I wanna be successful as well, but how to actually do it? Now, what I did was back five, three years ago, I can't remember, um, I woke up at 5 a.m. I started at 5 a.m. actually, because I saw someone that I knew that could wake up at 4 a.m. So I felt that it was possible. So sometimes you hear about it, but you don't feel like it's possible. You think that it's like, I don't know, they're crazy or they must be different. But when you know someone personally and they could do it, it just gives you more confidence. So I'm telling you now, if I can do it, you can do it. So use me as that example of that person that can do it. So then I wake up at 5 a.m. only to realize that I only gain about an hour before my kids wake up. A few weeks later, I decided to wake up at 4 a.m. to just give myself more time. And yes, it was a big shock to the system. It's like from someone that wakes up at seven or eight to then all of a sudden four, I was very sleepy for a few weeks, but I pushed through, you know, by the time it was afternoon, I'm quite tired, but I was very mindful of what time I sleep. So people always ask me, what time do you actually sleep then? Well, let me tell you another limiting belief that stops people from waking up early is thinking they need eight hours of sleep because we're all told that you need eight hours of sleep, but is that really true? It's not really true because now I've realized that I actually only need six solid hours of sleep. So what happens when you allow yourself to be quite tired by the time it's nine or 10 p.m. is that as soon as you go to bed, you're dead asleep, you're so tired. But whereas if you just have all the time in the world trying to fall asleep and wake up anytime, I don't know, your body is just, you know, it, it's just a wide awake. But when you push yourself till, you know, 9 or 10 p.m. and then you've got six hours to sleep, I just find it 
uh, myself to have a very solid quality sleep. So it's not about the quantity of hours you sleep, it's the quality of the hours you sleep. So six solid hours is, is good enough. Now, one tip is don't sacrifice on sleep though. So I always make sure I sleep for six hours. So there are cases where I have to go out for dinner or something happens and I can't sleep by nine or 10 p.m. So what do I do? I actually change my alarm clock to go and push it further so that I have to fit in six hours. So my tip for you is don't sacrifice on sleep. Sleep is so important. It's not about sleeping early, it's about having at least six hours of sleep. Because if you just focus on trying to wake, uh, wake up early but then you know, allow yourself three or four hours sleep, then you're really losing that whole benefit. The whole benefit from it is supposed to be clarity and smartness and, and whatever it is, you're actually gonna feel sluggish, you're gonna feel tired, grumpy, and maybe even pick on your loved ones, right? Like I was thinking of my husband, I always pick on my husband. Now, what time do you have to sleep? Well, you have to be strict. It's like, all right, it's nearly nine o'clock. I'm gonna go to bed now. The good thing is when you have kids, you have to get them in bed as well. So I love just kind of tucking them in bed and having a, falling asleep as well. And when my husband goes to sleep, he might, poke me and say, hey, come back to my room. So I go back to the room. So what time do you sleep? Just work backwards. So if you want to wake up at six, make sure you, you know, go to bed at 11 or 12, but come on, 6 a.m. is not that early, right? If you're watching this because you want 3 a.m., then just start to try to push to make sure that you can have a six hour sleep. Next tip is don't start so hard and fast. So if you are used to waking up at seven and you have no other reasons to have to wake up early, but you want to, then start training yourself to wake up slowly, you know, like half an hour early for the next few weeks, maybe three or four weeks. And then you push yourself to another 15 minutes. Even if you did 15 minute inc increments, it's a lot more helpful. Now I jump from kind of a six, seven AM person to straight to 4 AM. I have the motivation because my kids wake up and I don't have any time for myself. So I just really like, you know, bite my tongue and just really did it anyway. But I know it's harder when you actually don't have a reason to. Maybe you're not married yet and you do, or you don't have a partner. It's even more challenging to go and put yourself some boundaries and forcing yourself to wake up. But, you know, write down the list of the reasons why you wanna wake up early. You know, how serious are you about your success? What are you gonna do in those hours? So the next thing I wanna share is what do I actually do in that morning routine? So I wake up at 3 a.m. now. Now, last year I pushed myself from 4 a.m. to 3.30 and then I trained myself slowly to 3 a.m., right? I didn't just go straight to 3 a.m. out of nowhere. It was a bit of an increment like I just told you before. But the next thing is, the thing that I still do is leaving my clock, my alarm, my, my phone outside of my room. I don't sleep with my phone and I have the alarm on loud. So at 3 a.m. when it rings, I run quickly to turn it off so that I um, don't wake up the family and it forces me to be wide awake. If you leave your phone next to you, there's a high chance you're going to actually press snooze and then you fall back to sleep. And I still do it to this day. If I ever happen to accidentally leave my phone there, it's almost impossible to get up. But if you leave your phone outside, when you hear the alarm, you're forced to get up. And if you're already up, you're still tired, but you just stay awake better, more easier. So what is my first morning routine is I wake up, I turn the alarm off, I go to brush my teeth. I always have a routine of going to the toilet. Number two, it's, it's actually quite healthy where I just feel like I can let it go at that time and I don't have to feel like bloated. So I do that and then I also, um, you know, brush my teeth, etc. And feeling more awake now because I'm, you know, wiping my face and, and, and um, yeah, putting water on my face. Now the next thing is I actually go and write on my journal. So I have a journal app called Memento. Now this app, I've been using it for 10 years and I've been using it, I used to use it every you know, month, week or month when I felt like writing on it, but now it's actually a daily thing. So every day I would write down, number one would be, what did I dream about? I actually like to write quickly down what did I dream because I love to look back at some of the crazy weird dreams that sometimes come true and I like to go, you know, jot that down and just be able to read back and see a pattern in my dreams. Then the next thing is, what is my focus today? Like, what is the whole theme for today? Maybe it's, you know, getting through my YouTube or, you know, have uh, meeting up with partners or whatever it is. What is the theme focus for today? And then the next thing is, what do I want to feel? What do I want to be? Who do I want to be? So this is when you set the intention of who you want to be and how do you want to feel? And surprisingly, throughout the whole day, I actually end up feeling and being that way. So don't underestimate the power of actually putting words um, onto paper or onto this app. And then I also do gratitude. So I list down as many grateful things as possible, minimum three, but that's it. 
But if sometimes I feel like I have a lot of thought clogged in my head, I would actually write more. I would elaborate like, you know, I'm feeling this or yesterday I did this and this is how I'm feeling. Some days I don't write like a journal entry, but some days I like to write it just to capture the moment, capture my thoughts, you know, need to brain dump some things onto paper. So after journaling is where I would focus on my work. So if you're watching this video now and you might see another video on my channel called Morning Routine, it's a slightly different back then, you know? So over the years, you gotta adapt to life, you know, things change and you also wanna optimize and audit yourself. I used to do meditation and then go to the gym, etc. But meditation calls me to feel sluggish. And then I used to you know, drive to the gym, whereas now I found a gym session at home, um, group training session that's at 6 a.m. in the morning. So now I actually have a few solid hours where I just dedicate to studying. Uh, whereas back then, or studying or working, working on important things. Whereas back then, I used to go to the gym and then work, you know, and some days work, some days gym. But at the end of the day, it's almost like self-care in the morning. It's like your own time for self-care and slash important work kind of morning routine. Yeah. So right now, my morning routine is that I work for almost uh, journaling reflection, which is self-care between three to four, I would say, between four to 5.30. Um, is where I actually have a coffee with my husband so I fit in a session with my husband where I'm having a coffee and bonding putting some time in my love life and then after he leaves I might fit in a, a little bit more work and then I exercise for about half an hour to 45 minutes sometimes stretch to an hour but by around 7 ish the kids wake up the kids are now 5 and 7 so they do sleep in a little bit more after that it's mummy duty time it's taking them to school etc and then coming back to work about 9, 9.30 a.m. where I go back into work. Now the work is kind of a little bit different. It's more distracting because there's team members that are logging in, asking questions, and uh, I'm responding to the day-to-day day -day kind of work. Whereas in the morning, it's a different kind of work. It's work that is more high level. You almost feel like you're looking into yourself and seeing what do I want to work on versus kind of the daily work is very inside and kind of more reactive, right? Okay, now you're probably wondering, um, nighttime, like what do I do at night? So I used to not journal at night because I already journal in the morning, but lately I actually enjoy journaling or practicing a new habit of journaling because it is really helpful to reflect back as well. So before bed at 8.30 or 9 p.m., because I wake up at three now, I need to be bed in bed at nine. So that gives me six hours. But before I could actually sleep at 10, but now it's about nine. At night, I would journal kind of how was my day today, any worries, um, you know, what are the best case scenario, what's the worst case, and just think about my day or, or things that I'm thinking about so that when you're sleeping, your brain kind of still goes into the work mode and digest things and give you some more insights. Now, the days that I journal, I definitely can see the difference. Like, I just have more time to digest and have clarity. Journaling isn't supposed to take more time, it's supposed to save you more time. Because when you're journaling, you have clarity, you can declutter things. You might see things that you want to get rid of from your life. You have a different outlook and perspective on things, which actually helps you to go through life and have more energy and motivation for life. Sometimes people don't journal because they think, oh, it's going to take my time. But for me, it gives me more time because I'm more smarter at my next step, smarter at how to you know, redesign my life or etc. So because you think about things and you put on paper, you can see problems or you can see opportunities so that you could do something about it. So there you have it. A recap for you is start somewhere. Do commit to waking up early and start somewhere and know that it's hard, but you can always transition slowly. And if I can do it, you can do it. And I guess the key success tip is always leave your phone outside. If you want to turn the alarm on, um, if you want to put the alarm on, you have to have it outside of your room because that's the only thing that will make it stick for you to actually wake up at 3 a.m. So yeah, just put your alarm outside. Now, that's it guys. If you'd love to hear more about how to wake up early, ask me in the comments below so that I could help you. Other than that, I have more videos to help you to stay motivated and succeed in life. You can watch it here.